edges, edges, edges. That's the theme for this week. So if you're interested in finding out what to do if you've lost your edges or you have thinning edges, then keep watching. Hi guys and welcome to Dr. K Explains It All. My name is Dr. K and I'm your ever-present handy guide based here in London helping you and giving you all the tips and information that you need so you can make better decisions about your health. So today's video guys is part two all about traction alopecia. What is traction alopecia? What causes it? What can I do to prevent it? All those questions I've already answered in part one and if you haven't seen part one then I would suggest that you check that out and I'm going to put the link somewhere around here. Here. So make sure to check part one if you haven't already. But for those of us who've seen part one, let's just crack on to part two. So shall we? Let's do it. So just a quick recap. Traction alopecia, it's basically hair thinning or hair loss caused by pulling the hair too tight over a prolonged period of time. Certain hairstyles and chemically straightening the hair can cause traction alopecia and the first stage in treating traction alopecia is to find whatever kind of hairstyle or hair practices that you're doing to cause it and stop it immediately. Now that's well and good if you are at the early stages. What do you do when you do have traction alopecia and you're getting worried? That's what this video is going to talk about today. Now whilst there are lots of creams, herbs, ointments, oils, remedies that promise to grow back your hair and give you all the hair that you've lost in your thinning edges, I would be very skeptical about majority of these things because there's really not a lot of evidence that they do what they claim to do. So I would be very cautious before investing my money into buying a lot of these creams and treatments. And that's because when it comes to treating traction alopecia, there's really not a lot of um, treatments available. That's why it's really important to stop traction alopecia at the first signs rather than waiting until it becomes more permanent to start doing something about it. Generally speaking, the treatments that we have are split into two groups. Those are medical treatments, so involving things like creams, ointments, um, tablets even, or hair transplant surgery. Those generally tend to be the two main ways of treating traction alopecia that's more permanent. The first group, which is the medical treatments, might be quite varied. It might involve having things like um, steroid ointments and creams, which you apply directly on your scalp, especially if there are areas of inflammation there that, you know, by using the steroid cream, that helps to calm that down. And hopefully, once the inflammation is gone, then the hair follicle can grow back. So that's one option. Number two, which is much more common and much more widely used for hair thinning, are the shampoos that contain minoxidil. Minoxidil is also known more commonly as Rogaine, R-O-G-A-I-N-E. And that's the brand name and you can easily get that from a lot of pharmacies and supermarkets and shops. It's not on prescription, it's something you have to go and purchase yourself but again it's widely available and you can just go and get it from wherever you see it in stock. You can buy it online and it tends to come either as a lotion which you apply or as a foam which you spray directly onto your scalp. But like I said the active ingredient is minoxidil. The thing is Rogaine is safe and it actually does work for certain types of hair thinning and alopecia. It doesn't mean though it doesn't come without its own conditions. One, because you have to apply it directly to the scalp, some people may be sensitive and it might cause a bit of a reaction around the areas of the scalp where you spray it. So usually a bit of redness or irritation and that might wear away as you get used to it. But just be prepared that the first few times you start to apply it, you may notice some stinging, some redness, some irritation, like I said. So that's one. The other thing about this medication, this Rogaine treatment, is that whilst I said that it does work for hair thinning and alopecia, there's more evidence for it working in other patterns of alopecia. So things like um, 
you know, hair thinning that's related to hormone imbalance. And there's less evidence of it working so much. Or it's not, it doesn't, it's not been shown. Okay, what I'm trying to say is that it's not been shown to work as well for traction alopecia. But again, it's still worth a try, especially if you're not keen on going down the more aggressive route or you've just got some small patches that aren't too noticeable. So you might want to try it out as long as you don't have any issues or medical problems that would make it unsafe for you to try and you may benefit from it. From my own research into this, as I said before, it's not got a lot of evidence that it works as well for traction alopecia usually around three percent but then some people use it and they notice you know a dramatic result and then some people use it and they don't notice anything at all but we kind of you know it's one of those treatments that you know may be worthwhile as a trial to see if it works for you but being prepared that you might not get as dramatic of a result as you're looking for the other thing about Rogaine is that if it does work, it only works for as long as you carry on using it. It can take up to three or four months of using it consistently before you start to see results. And once you stop using it, the hair that grows would start to thin back down again. So it's one of those things that once you start it, and if it is working for you, you are committed to using it for as long as you need to, because the moment you stop, then the hair that grows out starts to thin back to what it was before. The other thing to bear in mind is that the hair that does grow with using Rogaine may be slightly different in texture or appearance or in curl pattern than your previous hair or the surrounding hair. Not usually enough to be, you know, dramatically noticeable, but still worth bearing it in mind. Before I move on to my next available treatment for traction alopecia, a quick info about shampoos that contain caffeine. I don't know where you are, but I've seen them advertised a lot on TV, on YouTube, and I've seen them in the shops about these shampoos that contain caffeine. And the whole idea is that caffeine is supposed to stimulate your hair to grow. There isn't any evidence for this. Caffeine is a stimulant. Yes, it stimulates your heart rate. You know, it makes you more alert, you know, gives you more energy, that kind of thing. But there's really no evidence that it has a direct effect on your hair follicles. And by the time that, you know, the caffeine is being absorbed into your bloodstream, it's doubtful that there's any active ingredient that's going to work on the hair follicles. So save yourself your time and your money and skip it. So the next treatment for traction alopecia, which can work, is... Um, PRP injections or what we call platelet rich plasma injections. So what are PRP injections? PRP stands for platelet rich plasma and that's the bit of your blood that contains all these growth factors and nutrients. If you think of it like the fertilizer. So we all have blood circulating through our body and Blood is made up of different parts. You've got red blood cells, you've got white blood cells, you've got platelets, and all these things combine together to give you the whole picture. What happens with PRP is that you get a sample of your blood and they spin it in a machine called a centrifuge. And what that does is that it separates all these different parts so you're able to take the part that you need, which is the platelet-rich plasma the fertilizer and then having done that you can inject it in certain areas usually you know around the face where they do the vampire facial you know Kim Kardashian made that really popular a few years ago and also they found that if you injected this platelet rich plasma into areas of your scalp the same way you'd fertilize soil and then the crops and the plants will grow is the same exact mechanism so there is some evidence for using PRP with people that have thinning edges. But again, with most things in life, you do have to be cautious before I advise you all to start rushing out to go and get this. One, it is expensive. Not as expensive as a hair transplant, which I'm going to talk about in more detail, but you still have to factor in the cost. And the reason that it's expensive is because you may end up needing several sessions. It might be anything up to three or four sessions over a period of months. So you're tying yourself in, it's not a quick fix. 
And also, you know, do you like having needles and injections? Because somebody has to take a sample of your blood. They have to, you know, you have to go to a clinic or a medical spa to have this done. And then they also have to inject it in different areas around your edges. So if you're not very good with needles or you're really, you know, funny about things like that, factor that in. And the other thing is that what it tends to do is if with traction alopecia, all the hair follicles are scarred and permanently damaged, it won't cause new hairs to grow back. And when I spoke to um, a specialist about this, what they said is that it tends to cause the existing hair follicles that are still viable, that are still, you know, that can still grow, to grow back and to grow thicker. So the idea is that it won't cause, if there's permanent scarring and that hair follicle is gone, it wouldn't, it's not going to cause that to come back to life and start sprouting up again. But the ones that are there that are still capable of growing and the hair is still able to come out of it, it will cause that to happen and it will cause the hair to be thicker. So that might be enough, especially if you've got a patch somewhere, that even having just the thicker appearance of hair in that area might be good enough for you. So that's something else that you might want to think about. But as with most, most of these things, my advice would be to book a consultation with a few clinics, see what they say and whether or not it would be the right option for you. But definitely in addition to using minoxidil or Rogaine, PRP injections is a second option for people with established traction alopecia. The third option, which is more suitable if you've got permanent hair loss from traction alopecia, is having a hair transplant. Again, this is a very big decision for a lot of people because it is expensive, it is time consuming, and you do have to do your research. Well, what is a hair transplant? A hair transplant involves taking hair from a different part of the scalp or the body and inputting it into the areas where the thinning is occurring. There are two methods of hair transplant. One is actually having a strip of hair, usually around the back here, cut out, and hair from that section is inputted into the areas that are thinning. Or the other way is having individual hairs taken out and then directly put into the areas where they're thinning. Both Again, it's not a minor procedure. You have to see the specialist that's doing it first for a consultation and they will determine based on your hair pattern and the degree of thinning that you have, which option is suitable. The whole process from start to finish is also not quick. It takes up to a year for you to start to see the new hair grow and the thinning areas restored. So not only is it expensive, which it is, but also it's time consuming. You are looking at optimistically up to a year before you get your thinning edges back. For those of you who have had really severe traction alopecia or really noticeable thinning edges, then it may be something worthwhile considering. And that's because it is a treatment for permanent hair loss. The actual procedure of having a hair transplant can also be quite time consuming. Normally you have to go in, you know, make sure that you're happy and you're fully informed. Then you'd have the patches of skin numbed with local anesthetic. And then the whole thing might take several hours depending on the amount of area that they need to cover. So that's also worth bearing in mind. But most definitely it does work. So there we go guys. Those are the treatments that I've researched into that seem to work for traction alopecia. The take home message with traction alopecia is that prevention is much better than the cure. So if you are doing things that are causing it or causing your edges to thin out, make sure to correct those before having to go into costly or, um, costly or time consuming treatments that may or may not work for you. Let me know what you think. If you have any treatments or any things that you found out, comment below and I'll look into it as well. And in the meantime, I look forward to seeing you guys same time next week with a different topic. You know where to be. See you then. Bye guys.